Why did history unfold differently in different places? How did some people become slaves while others became slave owners? Why were Europeans able to dominate the world and not Native Americans? Is it just a simple case of one being better than the other? Or is it something else? Ah, the Age of Discovery. Or how the people who were discovered called it the Age of Land Theft, Colonization and Genocide. Upon reaching new lands, first contact with the natives was always strange because they couldn't really understand each other. Probably for the best, considering how awkward it would have been if they actually could. Hello there, strangely dressed white person. What is the purpose of your visit? Business or pleasure? Conquest and domination in the name of God. So, um, I, I, I'm putting you down as business. Now, the Europeans certainly did a lot of uh, <clears throat> bad things at the time, but before you go judging these people from your 21st century high horse, you gotta remember a couple of things. Number one, disease was actually the main culprit, as it brought more death than guns and cannons ever actually could. Number two, we are indeed, believe it or not, the product of our environment. There is a geographical reason why so many people live here and not here. Just like there's a reason why Mayans built pyramids while their northern cousins smoke pipes and chase buffalo. But how come Europeans conquered the Americas and not the other way around? Well, the answer is actually quite simple. And it's... wait for it... Llamas! You can't really ride a llama, you can't drink its milk, and you can't use it to pull a plow. I'd much rather have a horse, or a cow, or a sheep, or a donkey. Hell, even a reindeer would do. And Native Americans didn't have any of these. The moment Europeans brought horses over was the moment Native Americans got 10 times tougher to beat. Try using a llama for warfare. I mean, it's completely ridiculous. And what about Africans? Why didn't they take over Europe? Well, because white people are clearly intellectually superior. Relax, it's just a joke. Put it this way, safari is a great experience, as long as you're in the Land Cruiser. Go on, go for a walk. Chances are you won't get that far. Hyenas, lions, crocodiles, w whatever this is. You know, it's quite easier to write operas and build weapons when there are no deadly animals preying on you. But before you even start unsuccessfully running away, you'll already be visited by the most dangerous of all, mosquitoes. Malaria made everything difficult, both for the locals and the wannabe conquerors. No wonder Africa was the last continent to be colonized. You see, the only reason you're sitting there watching this video today is because your ancestors managed to have sex and reproduce before dying from a horrible disease. A lot of people weren't so lucky. I mean, imagine being an Incan 500 years ago. You're just walking, minding your own business, when suddenly an apocalypse comes your way. Everybody you know is either dead or currently dying in agony. The king also dies and of course a civil war erupts, so now even the healthy people have found a way not to stay alive. And just when you think it's all over, you see a conquistador waving at you from atop of the hill. However, not all indigenous people suffered the same biblical fate. Some were tougher than others. For instance, let's take a look at the first people who arrived on the shores of New Zealand some 1000 years ago. Most of them just said, well this seems cool, let's stay here. But some were like, no way, just a damn second. I don't feel like we've isolated ourselves enough here. Let's go somewhere further away. So they moved here, to the Chatham Islands. The people that stayed in New Zealand became known as the Maori, while the ones who went to the Chatham Islands were called the Moriori. Maori's territory was bigger and more resourceful. They developed farming, therefore producing enough food to sustain craftsmen, soldiers and chiefs. Basically they created a political system. The Moriori stuck to clubbing seals and picking berries. With no means to evolve, they learned to get along with one another on their small, cold islands and just didn't believe in conflict as a concept. Centuries had gone by without any contact between the two peoples. 
until one day in 1835, some Australian sailors brought the news to the Maori. Hey guys, not you again. Yeah, me again. Anyway, on the way over here, we came across some people with no weapons, but their islands are rich with food and all other- Wait, 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 wait a second. Did you just say they have no weapons? Yeah, they, they kind of think war is overrated. All right. Jimmy! Jimmy! Get the others! <laughs> We're gonna pay these guys a little visit. So a group of Maori set sail on their captured European ship, and when they finally arrived, their cousins had no clue what was in store. Listen, dude, I know you just killed my family, but violence is never the answer. Wait, wait, what are you doing with that axe? See, see now, what was the point of chopping my arm off? Again with the foot! How are you enjoying this? What a, what a lame activity. Those Moriori who weren't immediately slaughtered were cooked, roasted, and in some cases enslaved. Not a peaceful end to a peace-loving people. Still though, all this doesn't really explain how and why Europe pulled it off. Well, because Asia failed. If we took a person that lived 2000 years ago, 1000 years ago, and 600 years ago, and asked them who's gonna rule the world one day, they'd all say China. China. So what happened? Well, let's take a look at China. It has two long navigable rivers connected by canals. It also has no significant geographical barriers. That means lots of food, many people, and easy transport. As a result of all this, throughout its history, China was nearly always unified. Now let's take a look at Europe, a weird looking thing. Europe has lots of peninsulas, islands, and mountain chains. Nobody ever managed to unite Europe. The Romans never controlled more than half. Napoleon tried and failed miserably, then Hitler tried and failed even more miserably. China had unity, Europe had non-unity, non they didn't have unity. Decades before Columbus, the Chinese fleet dominated the Indian Ocean. Until the emperor decided one day that he had enough of this stupid ship business. One no was enough for everybody to go, Alright, I guess we're not exploring the world anymore. On the other hand, when Columbus wanted to go on a trip, he asked for allowance here, they said no, so then he went here, and no, and no, and no, and at last, he went to Spain, where they also told him no. But you know how Columbus was, he could really bore you to death. So, in the end, they were just like, okay, here's the money, just please leave already. We all know what happened next. Spain got richer and richer, while the rest of Europe just stood aside and wept. Except no, that's not what happened. Instead, everyone was like, woo, America, let's go, woo. The beginning of the rise of Europe meant the beginning of the demise for the rest of the world. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, be sure to click on the bell icon at the bottom of the screen in order to be notified when a new video comes out. See you soon!